Diane Dodds. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm sure that I don't need to remind any member of the gravity of the situation we are facing. It is without question the most serious global health and economic crisis any of us have ever lived through. First and foremost, may I place on record my gratitude to all of those working on the front line to keep us safe and give medical support to those who need it. Can I also appeal to people to act responsibly, follow the advice, stay home if you can, and help medical staff by not acting recklessly and adding to the burden on our health service. Business owners too must follow the advice. Non-essential retail is closed, but if you are outside that category and you are remaining open, then make sure that you take the necessary steps to protect your workers and practice social distancing. Workers should not feel forced to work side by side. If a job can't be done within the PHA advice for social distancing, then employers need to let employees go home until a better system is put in place. This is too serious for shortcuts. The impact of the virus and the necessary measures that have been put in place to contain it have had a devastating impact on economies around the world, and Northern Ireland is no exception. Just this afternoon, I heard that Bombardier have been in touch to say that all of their worldwide operations have ceased for the moment. This won't be fixed overnight. The impact of coronavirus will be felt for many years to come. Our economy is suffering, our businesses are under extreme pressure, and people are not only living under the threat of the virus, but also the threat of losing their jobs. The impact is on real people and real families. People are concerned about how to put food on the table. People who have spent a lifetime building their business are afraid that it will be gone. Over the past two weeks, I have had a series of meetings and teleconferences with representatives from the retail sector, hospitality sector, and from right across our business community. There is fear about the future of their sectors. There is fear about the livelihood of their staff. There is fear about how to get through these challenging months. Our economy will suffer, but we will come back. I have heard of the many challenges that businesses are facing but I have also been inspired by the determination of people. Businesses who have offered help in sourcing things, individuals who have offered their help in looking after people or providing vital services, companies who have said that they can adapt their production lines to produce ventilators or personal protection equipment. More than 30 companies have offered to participate in manufacturing consortia to make ventilators. O'Neill's have started to manufacture PPE, and other companies are exploring the same route. A number of individuals and companies have sourced PPE masks from markets across the world. Several companies are in the process of accreditation to manufacture hand sanitizers. And there are four companies in Northern Ireland working on providing COVID-19 testing. Business is doing what business does, reacting and innovating. People who have found themselves out of work have also offered to help and examine how their skills could be used elsewhere where the greatest need is. I am examining a proposal to develop a holistic solution with coordination between the Department of the Economy and the Department for Communities. This would include utilising the current online systems, employer vacancy service and job centre online, with some wraparound support through career service and universal credit. It is that spirit of determination that gives me confidence that we will see this through and that our economy will recover. And I will be ready to assist in that recovery phase. But I also recognise how difficult the current challenge is and pledge to do what I can to help businesses through this period. I have already met with the local banks and urged them to be flexible and work in partnership with government I am pleased that yesterday we made progress with the launch of the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, 
and that some of our local banks help to co-design the scheme so that it works better for Northern Ireland businesses. The Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme is a crucial step in getting credit flowing to firms who urgently need it during this difficult period. And I would encourage businesses to work with the relevant financial institutions to ensure that the scheme delivers cash to those in need as quickly as possible. The Chancellor's statement on Friday evening when he announced an employment support package is also welcome and is one of the most important measures to have been introduced. We know that we need to keep people on the payroll to allow companies to weather the storm and pick up quickly on either side. The job retention scheme reflects the calls from this executive, our business leaders and trade unions who have seen similar schemes introduced across Europe to help uh, firms pay wages and retain their employees. I am pleased that many companies who had already announced that they were having to cut huge numbers of staff have now rescinded those announcements. This demonstrates why the scheme is so important. Yet it is an, uh, an extraordinary government intervention, but extraordinary crises require bold action. I am encouraged that the government has listened to our call. I would urge all eligible firms to take advantage of the measures announced to support their workers. The coronavirus job retention scheme will provide an income of up to £2,500 a month for those employees not working or up to 80% of the average wage. This will be backdated to the 1st of March and I understand that the Chancellor is uh, prioritising this to make sure that it comes forward in April. The self-employed and sole traders still require further help. These schemes do not cover everyone. So the Executive has asked Treasury to extend support to this category, either by averaging out the past year's earnings to calculate a figure or by paying a guaranteed income. Although this is not yet forthcoming, I understand that the Chancellor is currently considering these parts of the economy. The increases to both working tax credit and universal credit by £1,000 per year will also help protect the most vulnerable in society. In addition to the Finance Minister's recent announcement on a freeze of business rates for three months, we have also made an announcement confirming that we will pay a 10,000 grant for small businesses and a 25,000 grant to companies in our beleaguered hospitality, tourism and retail sectors. Together, these schemes will inject £370 million to support tens of thousands of our most vulnerable businesses to help with cash flow. These grant schemes will benefit 27,000 small businesses and 4,000 businesses in tourism, hospitality and retail. I understand that time is of the essence, as some businesses have already announced closures. Officials from my department have been working with officials from the Department of Finance over the weekend to ensure that we have a suitable mechanism to make these payments and that those companies facing cash flow issues are issued payment as expeditiously as possible. The administration of a scheme involving payments of over £370 million was never going to be straightforward. And in making this operational, um, as soon as we can. We are ahead of where counterparts in England, Scotland and Wales are at this point. Our immediate focus has been on putting in place a system for processing the 10,000 grant. However, I can also assure uh, colleagues that we are working hard to place processes for the 25,000 grant for hospitality and our tourism sectors. I am also seeking to identify any gaps in the measures that uh, have been announced nationally and in Northern Ireland and I hope to be able to be in a position to respond further to meet the particular needs of our businesses here, particularly in relation to the self-employed people, clarity for those in zero arcs contracts and for businesses that cannot avail of uh, the other um, measures that are available. Um, if I return to the issue of the small business grants, um, the eligibility criteria will be um, for those businesses who are eligible for small business rate relief. There are 27,000 of those businesses in Northern Ireland. 
We have used the, late, the LPS system to identify the businesses, and, um, but currently only around 9,000 of those businesses have um, a back system where we can make um, initial payments. We are currently, um, and hopefully tomorrow, I will be able to make a written statement to colleagues here to indicate to you um, we are currently um, putting uh, together a web portal where businesses can register if they are eligible for uh, the Small Business Rate Relief Grant and um, have not supplied their uh, bank details or, or pay their uh, rates currently through uh, the bank backs process. The um, rating uh, list that we will be using is basically last year's uh, list um, but we hope to also try to amalgamate that with some of those, with those who would be um, come into the category uh, within the new list and try to expand the list so it is as broad and as wide as possible. Um, so we must support the economy to recover. In terms of higher and further education, um, all institutions have convened a number of measures in order to manage and deal with the pandemic, such as the establishment of major incident teams, the activation of contingency measures. As the situation develops, all institutions are in contact with the department, informing it of any major developments. Each Northern Ireland higher education institution, with the exception of St Mary's, is closed for teaching and social activities. St Mary's uh, remains open, but under, uh, tuition is being undertaken online. All institutions are working hard to facilitate remote working for staff members where possible. In relation to examinations and assessments, Queen's University have cancelled all exams. The university will be arranging alternative ways to assess students. Stranmillis, the College of Queen's, will also be operating under the same measures. Ulster has also cancelled examinations and other face-to-face -face assessments scheduled for the end of the current semester, which will be replaced by alternative online assessments. The Open University has also taken the decision to cancel face-to-face -face exams. In respect of accommodation, student accommodation at the institutions remain operational, um, and for those students who wish to remain in university and university colleges will be supported to do so. In relation to international students, both Queen's and Ulster recognise the particular difficulties being faced by their international student communities. Students who are not normally resident in Northern Ireland, who wish to return home as a result of the pandemic, will suffer no academic disadvantage. Colleges are now distributing technology and equipment to allow the buildings to be closed, except for access in the event of a significant technical failure or to allow essential maintenance. Face-to-face -face delivery will continue remotely using digital learning. Each college is continuing to work through the ramifications and practicalities of the revised operational um, areas. We are facing very challenging times, and I welcome the positive response of the further education colleges. They have all now closed, but they have, uh, are determined to deliver for their students through digital learning and by maintaining college administrative processes to ensure that student support services, including education maintenance allowance, FE grants, hardship funds, continue to be paid. College staff have an important job to do and will keep further, op uh, further education and operational, albeit remotely, for learners as best as possible. They are working to ensure that we are ready for recruitment for next year to maintain the IT and estate uh, infrastructure, make payments to suppliers and staff, and our number one priority is to try to maintain delivery of the best possible teaching and learning to students at this time. College staff will continue to ensure that the most vulnerable students are supported and arrangements are in place which will lead to the continued payments of a weekly training fee and education allowance. Ed the executive has agreed to the provision of a payment uh, for each uh, pupil student who is entitled to free school meals and we are currently engaging um, to try to get that money paid directly um, to those for whom it is applicable. My officials are liaising closely with the regulators, CCEA, who are working with awarding organisations to establish ways of awarding vocational qualifications 
and we will do this in conjunction with other UK regulators, awarding organisations and stakeholders. Obviously for the colleges, vocational, there's a greater range of vocational um, qualifications and a greater range of those uh, who are awarding them. There are other areas of my department that are of vital importance. Officials have been working closely with the energy's uh, critical national infrastructure providers, including Sony, NIE Networks, the power stations, Mutual Energy, the gas op network operators, um, Phoenix, Firmus and SGN. We're doing this on a daily basis to ensure that their business continuity plans are proving sufficiently resilient to mitigate the risk of interruption to services. Officials are also liaising on a daily basis with the utility regular to support its work on maintaining the electricity wholesale and retail markets. Our first priority is maintaining supply, especially to vulnerable customers in these unprecedented times. One of our key uh, priorities over the coming months will be to ensure that there are food on people's tables. This week I had a teleconference with food producers and retailers. The agri-food sector has proven itself extremely resilient in the past, having overcome numerous challenges, and I have confidence that we will be able to put food on our tables. In order to ensure that the government is best placed uh, to ensure the sustainability of the agri-food supply chain, we will engage regularly to collaborate with those who keep the food chain functioning. My message to people is simple. Our food supply chains are strong, you do not need to panic buy or stockpile. This only hurts other people, mostly the vulnerable and the elderly. Be sensible. Our shops will be open for food. And when you do shop, ensure that you follow social distancing guidelines. To supermarkets and retailers, please remember your responsibility to protect your workers and shoppers at this time. None of this is easy, but working together for a common goal, we can and we will get through it. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. <clears throat> we, now go for, uh, we now have an hour for questions. Uh, I remind members of my earlier comment because I have a lot of members looking in, uh, so let's keep it short and snappy. Um, I call the Chairman of the Committee, Dr Archibald. Uh,